Hi there everyone, we're back at Deep Store in the salt mine where the Royal Society keeps a whole stack of their goodies and again we're with Laura and she's got out a special treat for me because Laura knows I love the Himalayas. What have yeah. you got? Oh you're going to love this. So this is to do with a British Himalayan expedition by Griffith Pugh, Lewis was his first name. Yeah. So this is the expedition that preempted the expedition to Everest where they finally conquered the summit. Exactly. So Hillary and Tenzing got to the top of Everest in 1953, but this was a Royal Society funded expedition in 1952 yep. to a nearby mountain, mm -hmm. Choi, Choiu. Choiu. It's not the easiest thing to say. No. It's the sixth <laughs> highest mountain in the world, but it doesn't mean it's easy to say. Mm -hmm. It's not far from Mount Everest, actually. They weren't allowed to go to Mount Everest in 1952 mm -hmm. because a Swiss expedition had the permit to try and get to the top. Right. So the Brits were all nervous. Oh, no, maybe we're not going to be first. But the Swiss didn't get there. Mm -hmm. So in 1952, instead, the British went to this nearby sixth highest mountain in the world to test out medical things, test out what kind of equipment they should use mm -hmm. in the hope that the next year they could use it to get to the top of Everest, mm -hmm. which they did. They did. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah yes. Oh, look at that. So off the back of this expedition, Pew, who was the physiologist who went along on the expedition, he went back to the UK, developed kind of a blueprint really for how they could finally successfully conquer Everest. So here we go, have a look at this. This letter here, oxygen equipment for the British attempt on Everest in 53. And it's talking about all the problems that have been had with the oxygen masks and the apparatus that have been used on previous attempts. So here's a whole bunch of tests and recommendations that have been made to make sure they don't muck it up next time. Physiological tests carried out by us this year confirm the experience of previous expeditions that the amount of oxygen supplied just balances the effect of the weight of the apparatus. So they're trying to figure out is the extra effort of carrying all the oxygen tanks up the mountain worth it mm -hmm. for the having the oxygen? Mm -hmm. And they're saying, yes, it is. It is the, it is the way to go. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. We're seeing here at the start of 1952, they're writing letters to each other, the people they're going to go on the 52 expedition mm -hmm. saying, these are some of the problems we think that climbers are going to have. And then we see the letter here proposing that they send like a doctor expert along to study all this stuff. It's like you're reading their minds. They're mm -hmm. having the ideas. Maybe we should send a doctor. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to look into this. Who are we going to send? And it all kind of unfolds here. There's also some letters here that show a bit of the fundraising they're doing, asking people to send checks mm -hmm. and where to send their checks to, to help, yeah. help pay for it's the trip. expensive business. So now we've got a letter here from someone at the Medical Research Council. They're back from their 52 trip and it looks like they've already realised what a good idea it was to send this Dr Pew. I've seen Pew twice myself since he's got back. There is no doubt that he has obtained results which are not only of considerable physiological interest but which should be of great value to future expeditions. All right. So here we have a letter that's been written from the Secretary of the Royal Society. You may like to know that from what we have seen of his preliminary investigations, his help will be quite invaluable in planning the British Everest attempt next year. In fact, his discoveries have, I think, at least opened the eyes of some of our more diehard colleagues in the mountaineering world to the need for a scientific method in tackling a problem like Everest and the need too for a consecutive program of research and development if we're going to produce an oxygen set for next year. And anyone who knows anything about the first ascent of Everest in 53, the design of these oxygen sets was crucial. And here's kind of the evidence that it's scientists mm -hmm. behind the scenes who are telling the mountaineers, look, you need to listen to us. Mm -hmm. We know what we're talking about. We've made these discoveries. We've done the research. We're going to help you get to the summit. And, oh, and they did. I like the thought of a problem like Everest. It's just a big problem to be solved. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is a very big problem. Yeah. I have to say as well, I quite like the idea that we're making this little video about the highest mountain in the world while we're actually 150 metres yeah. underground in a salt mine. <laughs> I kind of forgot about that for a minute there. <laughs> and this is probably the most important document of all in this mm -hmm. particular file because this is the Dr Pugh's final report about mm -hmm. the 1952 Himalayan expedition, everything they learned. Most importantly about the oxygen, also about effects of high altitude, the importance of health and hygiene during your time at these base camps. And also there's even a chapter about the Swiss experience on Everest in 52. So the Swiss and their failed attempt to yeah. get to the top. So this is all the lessons that have been learnt that were going to get them to the top. Oh, I want to read this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Supplementary oxygen during sleep. Wow. So should they be putting on their oxygen masks they're while they're... Trying everything out, I think. Yeah. Hemoglobin, so he's obviously doing blood tests on yeah. everyone while they're there. Oh, look. There's the, there's there's the, the diet. Hey, it sounds all right. 100 pounds of plain biscuits and 100 pounds of sweet biscuits. Mm. 
porridge, oats, cashew nuts. So I forgot the chocolate. Sounds all right. 100 pounds of chocolate. <laughs> All the different clothes mm. they took, all the different types of gloves they had with them, the types of boots, and a little map of the area. That's the problem. There's the route they would have walked from Namchi Bazaar, the big town in the Kumbu region, all the way to the base of Everest. And there, off to the left, is Choi Oi, <laughs> Choi U, <laughs> where they were in 52. Ah. Pictures. <laughs> and here are a few pictures attached to the report as well that were taken on the 52 expedition. That first one says, camp on Memleng La, 20,000 feet, where physiological experiments were carried out from May 22nd to 28th. And then we have mountaineer wearing down clothing. That's lovely. Graphs of air temperature. And you see here, he's also been graphing the temperature inside tents to find out how effective the tents are. We have tests of the haemoglobin levels in European and Sherpa porters at oh. various levels. There we go. Wow. The scientific method in action. There's another letter here, which we'll look at just quickly. Here we go. Another one of these fabulous collections of correspondence that you find here at the Royal Society. I mean, this is so exciting to me, something written in the hand of the man whose name, if nothing else, is incredibly iconic. 